Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back to theCUBE. theCUBE has been called Eagle ESPN TV's Live continuous coverage from EMC World 2015 here in Las Vegas. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with my co-host Steve Chambers. We're with Wikibon. Find all of our research on wikibon.com. Uh, having a regular back on theCUBE, Jack Rondoni. Uh, <laughs> our regular. VP of Storage Networking. That's uh, right. Of course, uh, you know, talking storage ready at EMC World. So yeah. Jack, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be here, Stu. I'm, I'm glad to see I'm a regular now. That's awesome. A absolutely. I'm moving up in the world. So uh, we're, we're going to take a little bit of a different, uh, you know, uh, you know, interview with you this time. We, we've talked a lot about traditionally storage networking. Many people equate to fiber channel. That's right. And of course, Brocade's the industry leader in fiber yep. channel. Fiber channel's doing great. But we're going to kind of put that aside for this interview and talk a little bit about the IP networking to start with. Some of the flash storage that's doing there. Um, so you know, introduce us to you know what is. IP storage network. I mean, isn't IP just IP? Yeah. So, so it's uh, that, and that is the question, right? Because for the last 15 years, that was the story, right? So, and 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 you hit the you, you hit the nail on the head in the sense that I would say in the past, the last 10, 15 years, if you had something that was important, you put it on a fiber channel, and it's going to stay in fiber channel. It's going to continue to go along. We're all happy about that. But then what we've seen, and then when it wasn't really that important, you put it on your IP storage, right? And think of it as like really mission critical type of um, workloads. You put it on fiber, if it's file sharing or something, you can get to it in two or three days, yeah, you put it on IP, whatever, right? Yeah. And thus, the network didn't matter because the workload didn't matter. So the change now, what we're seeing, Stu, more and more, is that people are putting you know, high scale uh, uh, VM stores, they're putting analytics, and those are, are um, workloads that are being driven, apps that are purely really for IP types of storage. And so what we're seeing more and more with our customer base is, um, as they deploy these important workloads, right, on, on IP level storage, they're asking more and more questions about the network. They're starting to realize that the network actually does play a role in terms of the overall level of reliability, performance of, of the uh, uh, environment. So Jack, yeah, I mean, I, I, I lived through this for many years. Yeah. I mean, you know, what, one of the biggest challenges you had, you know, originally it was like, okay, do I go, you know, fiber channel or NAS? Yeah. And one of the challenges was if I needed performance, and I went to the network team. Um, you know that that uh, you know it was a three-letter word that was a four-letter word. It was QoS. Oh my God, no! I don't yeah. have time to adjust that. I'm just general-purpose network, and, and you know I'm not going to take care of that. So the storage people said, "Forget it. If you're not going to take care of it, I'll just own it." And therefore, the storage network was kind of there. And that exact same dynamic we see happening, yeah. in the sense that. QoS is still a bit of a four-letter word. Yeah. And when the storage buyers are buying these, you know, new arrays, new systems running these workloads, what we're doing as part of our strategy is saying, well, let's give them an IP network that feels like a, and performs like a simple, high-performance storage network. In fact, we're designing features and capabilities that are specifically designated for a storage person. Um, to the point where um, our Ethernet fabric switch, um, called the VDX6740, um, has been branded by EMC, and is positioned by EMC as an IP storage switch. Um, and so the idea then is, is that dynamic that you're talking about, complexity, politics, whatever it is, um, you basically give the storage buyer the ability to go deliver on the SLAs that they're going to be held accountable to, right? And do it within an environment that they don't have to learn protocol exotica. Like, if you ever look at Ethernet data sheet, and we make big, beautiful Ethernet switches, right? So don't get me wrong. But you know, they, they, Ethernet needs to do so much. You know, storage. You know, fiber channel is relatively simple because that's really all it does. And so our IP storage. I, I'm um, sorry, storage Jack. Did you just say that fiber channel is pretty simple? Relatively speaking, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, so I mean, how do you answer the question? I mean, we weren't going to talk about fiber channel, yeah. but you know, the 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 general commentary in the industry is that. Fiber channels, this dark art that storage people do. Um, it's not like, oh well, you know, Ethernet's simple. Ethernet's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Is that just not true? If you want to do a couple ports at you know five terabytes, you can do whatever you want. But you want to be a petabyte scale. Complexity um, and variance leads to stability issues. Leads to all these problems. Fiber channel, from a protocol perspective, is very, very lightweight. 
just because it has a, a single purpose, really. All right, Steve, um, Steve, Steve, you want to chime in on any of that? What, what, what's, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think about you know the times when I've had to do zoning, and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we've been talking. And they're perfect. Right? Well, we've, we've been talking today about performance, and you know, sure. immediately you think IOPS and things like that, but. Increasingly, we've heard from some customers today that performance for them is the time it takes them to actually get something done. Absolutely. And I think once fiber channel's in place, then yeah, yeah. I get it. Right? But I think, I think what, what Stu's referring to is, you know, I think there's an impression that Ethernet is completely different. You just plug it in and away you go. But I think you're saying there's a little bit more. No, you know, it, it is. And, and I think, again, when the workloads are important, you're doing it high performance and high scale, the yeah. network matters, right. fundamentally. I mean, that's yeah. our, the network does matter. And what we're doing then is with our Ethernet fabric technology is, is building the feature sets, right? Yep. So you maintain that level of agility that you expect from Ethernet, mm -hmm. but then you get the performance and the scale and some of the automation that you'd expect, right, specifically for store yep. types of workloads. Yep. Um, and we're seeing good traction in the market with this. Um, you know, EMC is a partner, you know, they're branding it, um, mm -hmm. uh, Connectrix IP switch, yep. or IP storage switch. And so we're very excited about that in terms of our position Within the market to not only you know build upon our fiber channel heritage, um, but you know address you know file-based solutions, even based you know object right, yeah. um, you know some large object clusters we're looking at, as well as even hyper hyper converged infrastructure type of solutions right. there right because yeah. you get to larger scale, the network starts playing a more and more important role. Yeah. So it's very exciting for us. And by the way, the way we're attacking this too, I'm um, sure Steve, it's not just with a single product. Yeah. So we're coming in with a uh, we announced last week a disaster recovery business continuity solution qualify for large-scale IP storage environments, right? We already did that in fiber for years. We're doing it for IP today, right? right. We're doing it within our management software, right? So we have a single management interface, Brookie Network Advisor, whether it's fiber channel or IP, bring, gives the customer data and information for a storage professional to make important decisions about their storage network. Got you, so, so what you're saying is, you know, right, right at the top you were saying that, um, you know, in, in the olden days, if you like, um, you would prejudice your workload onto fiber channel if it was really important, less That's important. Right. But I think what you're saying now is, if it's a really important workload, you still you're getting all these great enterprise features on Ethernet as well now, right? Exactly, right. exactly. And, and, it's, and the fact of the matter is, you guys are right. A lot of the new workloads are being put on Ethernet, right? Yeah. And so, and they expect levels of performance and reliability, right? And that's what we're delivering with our IP storage solutions. Okay. Well, Jack. Um, you know, one thing I want you to dig in here uh, for, for a second is, you know, it, it sounds like when we're doing an IP storage network, it's not a general purpose network. It's something that's going to be used, um, you know, dedicated uh, to that environment. Yeah. So in many ways, it's going to look like uh, a, a fiber channel network. Um, you know, what, what I want you to kind of kind of address there is, um, you know, does that defeat some of the purpose of going to, you know, an IP network? I thought it was supposed to be, you know, same equipment, same, same skill set, you know, same gear, you know, can I share some ports? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, utilization is still, you know, really low for most equipment uh, in the data center. Can you kind of address that challenge? Yeah, that so question? I think, you know, a number of companies, so just put brocade aside, right? Yeah. There's about, you know, 10, 15 companies that we've seen out there, device manufacturing workload, that say basically, if you're running certain levels of scale in I.O., mm -hmm that a dedicated IP network is the best practice. So it is the best practice in the industry. We've talked to analysts, we've talked to big customers, like, we've been doing that for a long time, right? Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely, and iSCSI, right. that was like the way we did it absolutely. going forward. But right. we can't get beyond that, it's, you know, architecturally, you know, there's not something uh, that, that we can do. So, so no, no, so, so we're there, right? Yeah. So you say, now what's your separate, then the question is, is what does that network look like, right? Does it need to be a, you know, support VPLS, MPLS, and, and broadcast, multicast, you know, all these types of things? Absolutely, I mean, uh, there's a number of those capabilities within our VDX, that an Ethernet switch is an Ethernet switch, but what we're adding onto that are specific storage-related capabilities, right? And um, FabricVision, for example, is a uh, deep instrumentation level of service that we brought in Fiber Channel. We're bringing that over to our IP network. The only people that could appreciate that are actually storage people, right? Mm -hmm. Really what it comes down to. So yeah, it's an Ethernet switch. It'll do your Ethernet you know, core stuff. Um, but then the built-in multipath and the built-in management, you know, we think has a special appeal for um, storage professionals. So, you know, we, we saw a really interesting keynote this morning, you know, the beast was unleashed today, right? You yeah. know, the, and the performance figures were astounding, and we've yeah. heard from some customers today that it just changes the whole equation for them. You know, yeah. um, you know uh, I think Stu's already uh, said to a few people, his performance no longer, it's no longer, it just takes it off the table, right? Yeah. But one of the things that stood out to me this morning when we saw the keynote was, you know, you need to keep feeding the beast. And I think, well, if you've sold performance there and this thing is so hungry for data, then is it going to change your network architecture to get to it, or can you just plug it into the same old thing you had? You know, do you, you know, is there, 
do you need new features? Is, you know, do you see a different architecture required to have an all flush array at the end? You know, how does it affect yeah. you guys? So for us on the fiber side, so most of the connections we've seen coming out of the, the uh, all flash rate yeah. have been fiber channel. Right. Um, and you know our, our fiber channel products are very low latency. We measure in hundreds of nanoseconds type of stuff. So it's really, those are kind of peas in a pod there, you know, in right. terms of the perspective being able to handle it. What we do now is we're adding just more of that instrumentation, like I'm saying, right. to make sure that you can bring these all flash arrays into a shared SAN and not affect anything else well, as well sure. as get the performance you could expect. be one hell of a noisy neighbor, right? Yeah, no, right, right. So, so that's where we add that deep instrumentation, yeah. right? And then on the VDX fabric side, one of the key things we're doing a couple things is beyond that deep storage related instrumentation, we have very low latency as well, you know, hundreds of nanoseconds type of, of capability. And then also we have the ability to go in and take buffers that are associated with the number of ports, pull them together and get a little bit more of a kind of performance optimized for large packet kind of yeah. storage workloads, right? That plays well also within our uh, uh, the, the flash environment, so. Yeah. So it's interesting because you know for, for way too many years we were arguing over you know how much bandwidth I could get for fiber channel versus Ethernet. And yeah, it's like right. you know, two, four, you know, eight, sixteen yeah, versus yeah. You know, eight, one to yeah, ten yeah. to forty to twenty-five or things like that. Um, latency is you know something that you know fiber channels had great latency for yeah, years. Absolutely. Um, can you talk on the Ethernet side? You know, what, what are you guys seeing? What are you driving? I mean. Uh, things like Rocky and iWarp are coming up in a lot of conversations. Um, you know, so so obviously Ethernet's doing there. What, what what's Brocade's positioning? Yeah, so from a pure latency switching side? latency yeah. perspective, like I said, we're in very good shape, right? We're hundreds of nanoseconds type of switching. Yeah. And and InfiniBand's always been kind of in that area yeah. of ultra low latency, and then it's got the benefits of the RDMA capabilities yeah. and stuff. And I used to work in our InfiniBand a long time ago, right? Um, when it was going to take over the whole kind of you know PCI world, parallel PCI, right? So, um, Three GIO, right? It yeah, was, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then hypertransport came out, and yep. everybody freaked out. And yep. stuff, uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I think what we're going to see with iWarp and Rocky is really take a run at InfiniBand in terms of kind of where it's been able to go and be that kind of back end clustered kind of interconnect. Um, and so that's really where we see that making probably the most inroads overall because it's combining not just the latency but all the, the offload type of capabilities as well. So, we spoke to a customer. Um, uh, from Australia, and he, he told a great story about having dual data centers. Yeah. Um, using your technology, um, Ethernet, and you know EMC technologies to have two hot data centers, and he can just shut one down, and the workloads are always moving between them. He doesn't have to do DR anymore. Is there anything specific in your switches that enable that? I guess that's the first question. The second one is, do you see that happening a lot? I think he said he was the first customer in Australia to do it. I mean, it just sounds so appealing to me, right? Take that headache of DR away. You yeah. Know, so, and it sounds like you were a key part of that. Yeah. So, so we have a couple of capabilities in that front. And what we announced last week was, so we build a data replication fabric that's really built for heavy duty storage, and we right. do a number of things that optimize those connections between the data centers for large scale storage. We optimize the TCP windows over storage. We add uh, multi pathing, uh, or excuse, excuse me, failover. Um, and load balancing into the WAN links, which are notoriously unreliable, right? right? Okay. Um, and then we even act, add some uh, kind of WAN testing optimization so you can test your apps when you lose some WAN links and kind of see how they perform, oh, that's right? Interesting. And so the interesting thing is, and we're doing that both for fiber and IP, that's why I'm very clear to say, you know, I'm the storage networking person, right? <laughs> right. I'm a fiber channel networking guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that kind of capability gives those customers that ability to go handle it. And the important part is you handle it at scale. Because yeah. if you're doing it, you know, at large scale, that's when that stuff really You don't want it to, to be matter. fragile, right? I'm sorry? You don't want it to be fragile. You want it right. to be reliable. You want it to do it, as you say, at yeah. scale. We deal really with mission critical, business critical type of environments, right? Um, that, that that that's where we, you know, that, that that's our forte. All right, sure. so Jack, to, to close the interview, you yeah. know, here at EMC World, uh, you talk a little bit about e how EMC has been getting involved in the IP storage networking piece uh, with, with Brocade. Absolutely. So, of course, you know, via, you know uh, EMC is a leader with VNX, Extreme IO, Isilon, Data. I mean, you name it, right? Um, it's even Scale IO, right? I mean, that's an Ethernet solution, you know, for software-defined storage. Um, and really what EMC did is they looked at our, our technology offerings, our VDX, Ethernet fabrics, and said, this solution when coupled to their storage, yeah. really kind of like how Fiber Channel about makes that total solution better. And basically what they did is, and you'll see on the, on the show floors, a number of solutions where they've taken our technology, branded it themselves, positioned it as IP storage, 
um, networking, right? IPSN, I like to call it, and um, are, are showcasing it as part of these solutions, right? Sometimes it's hidden in as part of, let's say, VSpecs Blue type of uh, architecture, and then sometimes it's right there, you know, it's sitting right next to the VNXC. Like so business. we're very excited about this show in terms of what it means for the partnership as well as for Brocade. All right, well, Jack, we're going to have to leave it there. You have a huge partnership with EMC uh, and, and Brocade, of course. Uh, Diamond sponsor, also one of, Brocade's one of the lead sponsors of EMC on the Charity Water, uh, which is happening right over here in the hang space next to us. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be right back with lots more coverage here from EMC World 2015 right after this quick break.